always talk about faith, you know, what, how faith comes, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What is faith? Faith is what? The substance of things not seen. It's the evidence of things not seen, right? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is. And then we know how it comes, amen, and how we're to live. We're to live by what? Faith, the just, and walk. We walk by faith and not faith, you know, walk by faith and not by sight, amen? So we want to learn, not learn, but know sometimes and know what faith is and what faith is not, amen? Because sometimes when you hear what faith is not, you recognize Am I doing these things to stunt my faith from growing, from moving forward, from accomplishing what God has me to do? Because if those things are hindering, those are why people can't move beyond where they're at. That's what he wants us to uh, know. Amen. I, obviously, the Bible is written for those things so we can learn from them that we to obtain faith, but not to shrink back, amen, where we don't, where we don't go where, faith, where the Lord takes us because of certain things that will hinder us. It will be doubt, unbelief, those things, amen. So we're going to read a few things. I don't know how long it will take, but I believe it will be beneficial to us because we talk a lot about faith. That's what... You know, that's what it is. It says in Romans 10, the word of faith. Amen. People are like, yeah, it's all, they, all that faith. Well, that's what the word it says right here. It talks about in Romans 10. This is the word of faith that we preach. Amen. So we preach that, praise God, right there in Romans 10, 8. It says, but what saith it? The word is near you. Amen says the word is near you oh man she just cut right in front of the camera okay <laughs> but no right here it says uh the word is nigh or near you even in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith that we preach amen so we want to build people's faith up and the way you build it up is by hearing it, amen, then you can experience it, praise God, because you got to hear it before you experience it. Some people can experience it, yeah, if someone else comes to them and they see, and then it happens, but you want to have a life full of faith, amen, and you want to live by it. Not by someone else's, but by your own. Amen? Because everyone has that, that everyone can obtain it, but not everyone's doing it. Amen? And so we want to see what the opposite is. So that way we can see, hey, is any of these areas causing us not to obtain what we supposed to have amen because it says right here in Romans chapter wow Hebrews I was thinking I was like hold up but Hebrews chapter 10 it says this I might go to this other scripture, but it does say uh, <clears throat> here in Hebrews, I'm going to go to this. There's actually two scriptures, but I want to read this one. <clears throat> I believe it's... Uh, Let me 
might just grab that. I'll go here first. I'll go to Hebrews chapter 10. It says this, verse 30, 35. It says, cast not away your confidence. Confidence is also faith. That's also boldness. Amen. Which has a great recompense of reward. But it also goes on further for you have need of patience. See, patience is at work. Amen. It says you have need of patience. Because what? That after you have done the will of God, that's work doing something by faith. Because faith is where the will of God is known. So after you have done it, you may receive the promise. Amen? So he said you might receive the promise after you have done it. So here in Romans, in Hebrews 6, 12, to say here, that you be not slowful. Then in other words, don't be so lazy about it. Amen? But followers... Of who? Of them. We don't want to be followers of the doubtful and unbelief or the fearful and the afraid. Amen. We want to be followers of them who through faith, through pistis, through confidence, through a full assurance. Amen. Full assurance. And patience, endurance, inherit the promises. Amen? So he wants us to be that type of people. Because patience is in with it. So you can have faith, but sometimes you need endurance. Because can you hold on to the long haul? You know, where you're not seeing it yet, but you're holding on to your faith. And you're having patience. You may not obtain it physically but you have obtained it what spiritually already amen when you receive jesus you obtained them already whether you saw them or not you when you receive them that's what faith is you heard it you received it and that's how you accepted them and made them your lord and savior and you still confess them you haven't gave up your confession about jesus though you haven't seen him physically he hasn't came back yet but through faith you're waiting amen you're believing you're holding confident you're holding steadfast and you're being patient about it some people are like oh lord jesus come Come, Lord Jesus, come. We're just hearing that song. <laughs> like they say, Maranatha. Some people, they want the Lord come now. They just want to hurry up, get out of this world, and be done with it. But it says through faith, because God's long-suffering. So long-suffering for God is waiting, but for us it's patience. Amen? Amen. We're enduring things, amen, that come against you, that can try to stunt your faith. But you're being patient. You're still holding fast and you're enduring through it, amen. So we're going to see some things why pay, faith doesn't work for people all the time, amen. So we'll see the other side. A lot of times you teach on faith, but you don't teach the other side. How about doubt and unbelief? where that can creep in. Amen? So let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word this evening. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for opening our eyes of our understanding, giving us insight, Lord, into your word, teaching us, Father, that we'll know what your word says. Your word's perfect. It's complete, Father. We thank you. Your way is perfect. And we thank you. You are perfect, Father God. And we just adjust ourselves to you in Jesus' name. We thank you. We line ourselves, our thoughts, our talk with you, Father. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise. 
and thank you for all you have done, all you're doing, and all that you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go over here and see a few things. Amen. Here, and we're pretty familiar with this, but in Hebrews chapter 4, it tells us this in verse 1, and we can read it out of the NLT. Because the King James says, let us therefore fear. Now, fear could be the right way, you know, but let's see what, how it says it in here. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. Why? God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So his rest is still there and obtainable for everybody. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. Why is that? It says that they might fail to experience that rest. There's nothing like having rest in the Lord. He said he's the Lord of the Sabbath or the rest. Amen? He wants us to have rest. What's the opposite of rest? You got to look at the opposite of it to know really kind of what it is. Because if you're doing one thing and not the other, that means you're on the other side of the coin. The opposite of rest is what? Worry. Amen? So in Isaiah, it says there's no rest to the wicked. But rest is peace. Amen? You're at rest. So rest is what? Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So rest is what is not is the opposite. He wants us to be at rest. Amen. Now, not to be worried, because that that right there isn't good. The the rest he's talking about is aboding. Amen. It it, it also means this in the in, in the Greek. But it means this, too. It means uh, to settle down. You know, when you're worried, you're anxious, you're all, you're not settled. You're all over the place. Your mind's worrying. I was talking to someone today, and I was saying, yeah, how's it going? I said, well, what's happening, you know, and stuff. He said, uh, you know, Sam, I'm like, what do you mean, Sam? What, what are we talking about? He said, well, uh, he was um, saying, well, just kind of worried. I said, about what? He said, you know, my place, uh, you know, I don't want no one breaking into there. I said, listen, has anyone even, have you heard of anyone breaking into anywhere around your place? He goes, no. I said, so why are you thinking about that? I said, is it gated? Yeah. So, Okay. Has any neighbors, you got to live in an older community. Who's going, is a guy coming by with a cane on and he's going to kick in the door or something? He has a cane and he's like, I see this guy coming. I said, w why are you even, where, 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 are you living in a place where it's known for that? You shouldn't even have to think on those things. Why do you trouble yourself? That's when people say settle down. You know, when you the person's all riled up, you tell them settle down. That means to rest. That means to be at peace. Why? Why are you up, all worried and anxious about stuff? It means to settle down. It means also to cease. Restrain. Amen. When you're about to go somewhere, you do something wrong that you shouldn't do. You restrain yourself. It says in. Proverbs, and we know this scripture. Look at this. Hold your spot there. We didn't even get finished, but I want you to see something. In Proverbs, this, and we pretty much know this scripture in 21, and we're pretty familiar with it. It says what? Without a vision. Amen. Was it 21? It's 28, I believe. It says... uh 
Yeah. Okay. It says people perish. They, without a vision, what? People perish. Amen. So it says without a vision, the people perish. Another scripture says 2918. I thought it was, I had it backwards. So 2918. But look at what the Amplified says. Where there is no vision, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation, the people perish. Another verse, I think it's the NLT. Let me look at it. That says without redemptive revelation. I was looking. Look at this. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. There's another translation that says, without a vision, the people cast off restraint. I thought it's maybe the classic Amplified, but it says they, they don't have, they cast it off. Restraint is good to have because it holds your composure. It holds yourself together where you don't run wild. There it is. I thought I was... Knew I, was, I knew what it was. There's two amplified. It says where there's no vision, no revelation of God or his and his word. So where the will of God is known, that's where faith is, right? So if they don't know the will of God, don't have a revelation of God, amen, or of his word, how to obtain it, how to do it. The people are unrestrained. So they cast off restraint. Restraint keeps you, when you not God's will, it keeps you restrained from doing wrong things, from growing the wrong way, amen, from thinking the wrong way, amen. So when you have restraint, when you have faith, it keeps you restrained. When you don't have it, you're unrestrained because now you're wandering all about trying to figure out how things are going to get done. Like you, you, you could be in a position of money. I'll put it that way because that's a lot of people. You know, they, they might figure out how they're going to pay their next bill. Well, if you have faith in God, you're trusting in him, it keeps you restrained from going crazy from going out thinking, well, how am I going to do this, do the wrong thing? Or if I got to go do something I ain't did, or maybe now I got to pay with credit cards, go in more debt, thinking that's going to get you out of it, where it's getting you more in the hole. People do that. They pay off something else with another thing. So that's unrestrained because now you're trying to take care of another thing with something else that you're not getting out of it. So having restraint keeps you from doing crazy things like that translation said from r running wild, right? So when we look at this, it says in Hebrews 4, 1, let us therefore, it says God's promise of entering his rest. Amen. Nothing's, there's, there's a blessing about resting. Amen? Because when you rested, you have no worry. You're not going gray. Some people could go gray by worrying. Not by wisdom, by worrying. Now it says a hoary head is uh, no unto a man. Uh, it says by what? His gray. Here in Proverbs. But not by worrying. He says his rest stands still. God's promise of entering his rest, it still stands. That's why it says in Psalms 119, the word of God is settled in heaven. God's not changing. He's not moving. His word has been here, will remain here, and won't change here. Amen? It's been the same since it was when Abraham walked the earth, when Isaiah was here, 
when Jesus spoke the word and the apostles written it by the Holy Spirit, the word has remained the same. Amen. And now that they, there might be different translations, they're trying to make you understand it in a different way. But God's complete word of what it is is perfect. Now, I've had people come to me and they're different religions and try to point out what well, about this and this and this. Listen, I know a man translated things and maybe numbers or something came off, but God's word's perfect. And if you don't understand spiritual things, you'll mix it up. They'll, they'll try to, they, they're fault finding. That's what they do. Others, they'll fault find stuff. I have had them come to me, but God's word's perfect. Man translated it. Nothing's wrong with that because God used people to work through to write it down. Did, could God write the word himself? Yeah, he could. He wrote it, what? With Moses. When he went up to the mount and God's finger did the Ten Commandments. And Moses came down and got so angry he broke them all. That was God's handwriting. Imagine that being all sold for the auction. How much it'll be worth. This is God's fingerprint of these Ten Commandments. How, what are we going to bid on this? Man, it, there's no money that could pay for that. That's the finger of God. So I'm just saying it was his hand work that did that, and Moses broke it, amen? And then he had to redo it again for the second time. Now you can't find it, and you're not going to find it because God already knows. People find that, they'll be, they already making up stuff. Yeah, we got Jesus imprint in his face. We got Peter's blood in this. That That's all like, that ain't even faith. You're looking at something physically, tangibly, you can have and see, and then you want to make money off of it. Or say, yeah, this is it. Here's his cloth with his face on it. Is that going to make you believe? So, yeah. So he says here, God's promise. Let's... Oh, wow. Okay. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them in verse 2 but it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to it they didn't share it they didn't share the faith of them that listened to it the reason why they didn't share it is because they didn't believe it People say sharing is caring. Yeah, well, if you care about someone, you'll share the word of God to them. Amen? But they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. So they had to speak what? Contrary to it. So it didn't do them no good. Can faith do good for people? Yeah, it says taste and see how good the Lord is. The goodness of God endureth continually as it says in book of psalm in james 1 it talks about what every good gift and perfect gift is from the father of lights who there's no shelter so it's good news the gospel that's what's called and it did them no good because when it was announced they couldn't enter a rest if they believe rest is there if you don't believe worries there amen it's the opposite. So what happened here? 4-3. For only we who believe can enter his what? His peace. His rest. His restraint. Amen? As for others, God said, in my anger, I took my oath, took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. See, Adam had rest. He had no worries. He walked with God. Him and Eve. Know when rest stopped? When sin started? When man disobeyed? Excuse me. Unbelief 
took its course. Disobedience is what? The opposite of faith. Amen? To obey is because you believe. To disobey is because something you heard different that caused you not to do it. Isn't that what the serpent did to Adam and Eve? He told them something different to change their belief. They, their belief system was already down. It was already there perfect because they had nothing else to hear but God. Right? When the serpent came in, what happened? He changed their belief system by telling them something different. That's where faith is void. It's non-productive because faith is productive when you hear it and you begin to use it. It becomes unproductive when you're not doing it. That's why it says here, look at this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, <clears throat> right here, uh, it says this, I believe, in Matthews. Um, huh? it says right here in Matthews, I believe, uh, right, yep, uh, Matthews 15, verse 7, or I actually, We'll start here, verse 3. He said, But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by what? Your tradition. That's something different than what God's word says. All of a sudden, they want to put their own word or work into God's. That's what some people do with the Bible. They'll change what the Word says or teach it the wrong way and what creeps in. It ain't faith because the opposite of faith is something against what faith is. Amen? It won't be the will of God. It'll be tradition. Amen? And that ain't where faith is built, right? So tradition can cause people to what? not move in the will of God, not to obtain, amen, not to be productive in faith. Tradition of man. Well, what's I seen them? Well, what was the word say? Well, my family did. Well, what was the word say? You know, it doesn't matter what your family, your friends, or who did it. What does the word say about it? And so he says right here, for God commanded, saying, Honor your father, father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. It's pretty hard. <laughs> but you say, they were like, whoa, we, we can't be doing this all the time. Now, if they obey God's word, they won't be doing that. <laughs> they won't have to kill no one. If everyone <laughs> honored, I'm just saying under the old covenant. Whosoever say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. That isn't what the word says. They're talking about it's a bribe. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or mother, he shall be free. Thus you have made the command of God of none effect. It's unproductive. It's unanswered. It's void. You're not seeing, obtaining what you want. By what? Your tradition. So one of the ways is this. Tradition can get in the way. 
to cause the word of God to be none effect in their life. Amen. I mean, you're seeing the opposite. So sometimes people want healing, but they might be putting tradition in. And it's become none effect in their life. It, it, because of traditions of man. Amen? So, and it, God want, God's will is for us to obtain his promise. He doesn't want us not to obtain it. He wants us to obtain it, but it takes getting the word to do it. Amen? It takes us to be obedient to it. It takes us to go after it. Praise God. So not to mix it. So he says here, through this, they didn't attain. It became of none effect to them. Amen. So look at this. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. I, I just we put it in the King James. So let me see this. I like how it says this. For the good news, it says this. For unto the uh, us was the gospel preached, the good news. Faith was preached to us. Let's just put it that way. Good news is faith. Amen? That, that's the good news. It tells us in, in the book of Philippians, us to be anxious, chapter 4, it says, be anxious for nothing. Amen. Worrying can stun a person from obtaining. Amen. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, through prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, what? That means, in other words, he says, be anxious or be careful. That's why he said, cast all your cares on him. Because he doesn't want you so worried about it. Amen. When you worry about something, you're not at peace. When you have the answer to something, then peace comes. Amen. And Jesus said in Isaiah, Isaiah um, 60, uh, let me see. Isaiah, he talks about in chapter 6, 3. I believe it was 6 3. He said, that Thou shalt be in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because what? He he trusts in thee. So, my mistake, I said 63. But it says this in Isaiah, I always say it. But it says this Thou shalt be in perfect peace. 26, uh, 62, 26. All right, Lord. Help me. It says, I got the word. I'm getting the numbers. It says, thou will keep him in rest. Amen. You will be kept, protected, guarded, in rest, whose mind is what? Worried? No, whose mind stayed on him. Why? Because you trust in him. Know what chokes the word of God out of you when your mind is caring about it? We know this because Mark 4 talks about it. It says what chokes the word is caring, careful. Amen. It says the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, and being careful, being full of care. Care, you're worried all the time. Caring chokes the word out of it amen traditions can but worry can worry stuns people from getting it because why you're not going to have perfect peace you can't be talking this way and talking that way maybe he will maybe he won't that, that's worrying that's like oh maybe he will maybe he won't Sometimes it's just good be quiet. Don't say nothing. Just let God do his work. And when you get the word enough in you, you could speak it. Just speak it then. But don't speak opposite of it. It'll come out if it ain't there. It's going to come out if it's not there. Amen? But if it is there, 
or if you don't know what to say, don't say nothing. You, if you heard what God spoke to you, whether it's his written word or his spoken word, if he spoke to you, get that word in you. So you're confident. All right, Lord, you said it. I believe it. It settles it. Amen. Write it down. This is the date the Lord spoke to me about it. I'm writing this thing down and, and I believe he's going to answer it. I don't know when I know it's going to happen. Amen. And so he says here for Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. That could be other people. He's talking about those in the Old Testament. But the word preached did not be productive. It didn't profit them. Profit is like when you make money, you profit off of it. Amen? That's why they got non-profit and they got for-profit. The word of God is for-profit. Now, someone might be seeing this, see, hey, look at that preacher. He's talking about for profit. You're supposed to make money. No, I'm talking about faith. God wants you to profit or off of faith, off of believing. What do you mean profit? Meaning to benefit your life off the word of God, to live by it. Amen? If you want to live with no productivity in your life, well, don't do the word of God then. But God's word profits you. Amen. You want to have a profit on it. Amen. That means you obtained the promise. That means you gained. Amen. You didn't lose. You may have lost your life, but it says he that loses his life, the same shall obtain everlasting life, shall gain everlasting life amen so he wants us to profit off of his word that's why he gave it to us if he don't if God doesn't want people to profit off of it he would have never spoke it to us he would be distant he, the door would be shut on us and we, we, we wouldn't have a word We'll just be walking aimlessly, walking with no restraint, having lawless and unfruitful and unproductive. That sounds terrible. <laughs> but he wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to be productive. Amen. He wants us to have restraint and he wants us to profit. Amen. Off of his word. Amen. He wants it to see it work for us. And for our lives. Why? So we can have a better life. That's why he said, God said to Moses and told the people, I set before you life and death. And he said, choose life that it may what? What? Go well. What does go well with you mean? The profit. That it may profit you. It may go well with you that's why he chose it otherwise you have been eating off the fruit of death it's been doing nothing it's been distressful it's stressful and all kind so look at this but the word preached did not profit them why because the word that they heard they didn't mix it with faith in them they didn't mix it they didn't apply the word to what they heard to believe on it that's why they cast it off they didn't want to receive it they were like ah this is too good to be true that's how they thought ah the, or really what this showed in this context was that they were afraid because that was a time when they went into the giants, they went into land. But this hole is when they were in the wilderness. And we could go, we're going to go through it, but they saw giants in the land. That was fair. They began complaining, murmuring. That ain't faith. Complaining about the answer. You know, complaining when God wants to do something good in your life. 
doesn't change it. It, 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 it. You're casting it off. And fear came. What did that do? That cast off faith. We all see it throughout the word. Because through the whole wilderness, they didn't enter the rest. They never made it to the promised land. Was it God's fault? Not at all. God already made the way for them. He said he did it from the beginning of the foundation of the world, but he did it already to make the way for them to go to what? The promised land. God wasn't holding them back. They held themselves back. God's perfect. His word is perfect. His way is perfect. We got to get ourselves in line with it. Amen. We don't, I don't want to be in a wilderness walking around. No, you got people. Hey, we, we want to preach faith here, you know, and we want people to be like full of faith, amen, to believe, to see the goodness of God in their life. But you know what happens sometimes? People get a taste of how good God is. And then that's it for them. They go off and do their thing. And then they come back when there's a problem again, when if they just kept holding on, God has better things in store for them. Do people have opposition that come against them? Yeah, you're going to have it in God or out of God. It's always opposition happens. But when you got God with you, man, he's going to take you further than you ever want to go. Or you ever could go on your own. So here he says, what? They didn't mix it with faith. Let's look at something here. Let's go to the book of Matthews. Let's look at another thing. And we'll be finishing today because we'll, we'll take our time through this. Amen. But, you know, we see a lot of what faith is. How about seeing what faith is not? So people can identify that, hey, I don't want to be in that route. I don't want to be that in that arena where I'm not obtaining where I'm supposed to have because I'm in that part where I shouldn't be. I should be achieving. Amen? So here in Matthew's, Chapter, <clears throat> let's go here. I think it's Matthews. Thirteen, yeah, thirteen. Now, verse one, it says this. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. It's kind of like the same time when Peter was there. And then Jesus said, let me borrow your boat, and he taught him. And then he taught a whole thing on parables, this whole chapter. And verse 36 says, And then Jesus sent the multitude away, went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. So he expounded that to them. And then it says this in verse 53, And it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed there. He departed from there after he finished. And when he was coming to his own country, look at this. He came to his own country, his own town. He taught them in their synagogue. Now, if there's the best preacher in the world that you need to listen to, or a teacher in the world, I, I don't think there's no one better than the one who is the Word. And that's Jesus. So I don't know how much farther they can go, but it said he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished. 
They were like, what? And said, whence has this man this wisdom? When did he get this wisdom? How did he obtain this wisdom? And these mighty works. So they saw things. They heard what he said, and they saw what he did, both. If anyone could have faith then, it should be right there. He heard them. He saw. They saw him. Now watch. Is that Jesus' part to make them believe? No. It's their part. Look at what creeps in. Is not this the carpenter's son? Here they are now trying to justify what they just said, saw. Is not his mother called Mary? See, they're, they're trying to take someone of honor and make them like anyone that's regular. They're trying to take God and bring, make him familiar with them. See, when you start counting people familiar, then you remove the faith. Because you're looking at the person on the natural and not who they I identified with. So what happened? They saw him and said, isn't this the carpenter's son? Where, where is he born from? Oh, is it this, his mother's name, Mary? And his brother and James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. So here they are questioning Jesus. And in other words, they took, see, God is the one that puts the person in the calling. It doesn't matter what background they had doesn't matter what status quo they had or education doesn't matter what family they came from and if especially if they grow up with you they think you still I got people who may think I'm still uh, who they are they keep talking the same way to me like we still kids in school and I'm like I, I'm not that tired you you talking to the wrong one because I'm not that per that person died and they can't handle it. They're like, oh, I'm just playing. No, you ain't playing. You want me to be who, who was buried. That person's buried. I'm not bringing that person up. I'm not the person we used to be when we were hanging out before I got saved. This is a different person. I ain't thinking that way. I'm not doing that thing. Are you still living that way from all those years ago? And see, when they don't reverence or reverence in a way of respect, honor, that stunts them from obtaining. And look at that. Watch what it says. And his sisters, are they not all with us? See, he's trying to make Jesus familiar with all them. When then, whence then, has this man all these things? Well, how did he get all this wisdom and do all these mighty works? He's like one of us. See, they just tore everything he just taught. It said he taught them, and they canceled it all out because they're looking at who he, who he came from. They're not reverencing what God called them to be. See, when God has an office of calling on you, that's the reverence that you expect, the office, not the physical appearance or the background of where he came from. You look at that. That's where they canceled out. Look at what Jesus happened. And they were offended. See that? In him. Look at that. It caused offense to come against to them because they were like how can he do this how can he know all this he's just like one of us his, he's, his sisters are here with us his brothers his mother's Mary and Jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor see when you don't honor someone sometimes you don't obtain anything 
because when you honor God or you honor people, amen, it causes you to obtain something. It says, he that receives a prophet, not a person, a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a what? Reward. So if you don't receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you ain't getting rewarded anything. You just making them familiar like everyone else. He that receives a cup of cold water, what? As a disciple will receive what? Their reward. Amen? And Jesus said, he that receives you receives me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me. See, some people get blessed because they receive. They receive the person that comes. Some people, people come into church, they'll have a speaker come in. They ain't receiving them, so they wonder, oh, this didn't do nothing for me. Know why? Because you didn't receive them. You weren't trying to receive. You were just checking things out. So, you, you know, like that's what can stun it. Know what happened? It, it's written. Look at what Jesus, look what happened. Keep going. Watch this. And he did not many mighty works. Why? Because of their unbelief. What's that mean? They didn't even honor him. They dishonored him, and their unbelief was because they didn't even receive what, even though they heard him, they saw everything he did, they were like, ah, oh, man. They became offended, and they, they didn't re obtain what they could have did, what they could have had. Amen? I mean, that's pretty clear there. I, I'll take it to a whole other thing right here. We talked about it last time, but it, it goes to go back to it again. You remember Korah? I mean, that's almost like the same. Thank God a, a floor didn't open up. And they fall into that. You never that, right? But here, uh, the tribe of Korah. Right here in uh in the book of Numbers sixteen. <clears throat> Won't go too long. Hey, how's it going? Praise God. But here was another, uh, another person. Just this, that was Jesus there. He taught them and showed them mighty works. And because he, they consider him a common person. A common folk, that's why they couldn't get healed. They couldn't obtain the other. In Mark, it says he did, he did, he couldn't do any great mighty works because or healing because of their unbelief. Why? Because they just counted him as a regular person like the rest of them. And this is Jesus who was God, manifested in flesh, but they were looking at his mother, Mary, his brothers, his 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 family and counted him as just one of them. So they couldn't obtain, they couldn't receive. So look at these folks here. Now Moses brought, God used them to bring them up out of Egypt. They in the wilderness. God wanted to take all of them to the promised land, but a lot of them didn't make it. Uh, most of them couldn't even make it to cross over. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's sad in one way. A whole generation couldn't even make it because of unbelief. So right here it says, verse 1, Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, Abram, the son of Eliab, of An, the son of Pithel, Peleth, the son of Reub, sons of Reuben took men. 16.1 of Numbers. 
And they look at this. They, this is Korah from the whole tribe of Reuben who had Levi and all them. And they rose up. They took men and they rose up before Moses. See, when you dishonor folks, don't think you're going to get something good in return. It says, give honor to whom honor is due. And God's not talking about a person particularly. He's talking about the office. And whether it's a president, especially someone in the pulpit, you know, because now you represent God. You could be a president and not even believe in God, but you still honor someone. But if you got someone that knows the Lord, that's a whole different case there. Because when people talk like they are today about preachers, they're talking about pastors, these are God's men. Now, I'm not saying there's some people that may do their thing, but no one, I don't know them. I need to do my part. i rather just not say a whole lot about it. Now, there might be ones that might be wrong. Yeah, that's on them. God will deal with them, especially if they're false, I'm saying, but not everybody is. The people who get hit the hardest is usually the ones that are on TV you see because now their life is open spectacle to everyone. That's what Paul said. He goes, "My, we, we are the least of all men. He said, we're the last. And he said, we're an open spectacle where everyone sees and we're the ones taking all the beatings so you can be made rich. Paul was getting whipped, beat on all kind of stuff. But what was it for? The furthering of the gospel. So here Moses is trying to take all the children of Israel to the promised land. And here's some of his own kind. It says, he rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 people, princes of the assembly. Look at it. He wouldn't have wrote this if he didn't put it. It says famous in the congregation. When you talk about people famous, there's people famous in the gospel, famous in the Christian faith. There is famous people, renowned. You know them. You know their name. You hear them. They're not there by accident. But these men stood up against them. They were famous too. The ones Moses, they wouldn't even been there unless Moses was helped to bring them out. They were all slaves in Egypt. They were crying out to God to get out of there, and God made a way for them to get out. And now they're going, they become complacent or think, hey, I, I, I'm all that. And so they rose up against Moses. Look at what they said. And they gathered themselves together. That's bad, man. Against Moses, against Aaron. Aaron was a spokesperson. He's the one that talked for Moses. And said unto him, you take too much upon you. Oh, you doing way too much. He, that's what they're saying. Seeing all the congregation are holy, everyone. So they're saying... You're not as holy as us. Moses was even trying. Moses, God said he was the meekest of all men. Why? Because he would talk to the Lord. He said the prophets, he'll show himself in parables and in visions. But Moses, he talked mouth to mouth. And look at what he says. Holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Look at that. They are saying... The Lord isn't just with you, it's with us too. Why can't we do what you do? They're already famous. You see that? They're already known. They're already recognized. And he said this, every one of them and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, poo, wow. He said, wherefore, this is 250 people said this and a man speaking on it for them. Wherefore, then lift you up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. You think this is faith? That ain't faith. He's saying, why do you think you need to lift yourself up? 
before the congregation. Moses was the only one there before they even got there. I mean, God told, called Moses. They, they even, they didn't bring all these people out of Egypt. God did. But who did he use? He used Moses. Aaron was used only because Moses was afraid and he didn't know if he could talk good. But because God chose Moses and he said, then lift up yourselves above the whole congregation of the Lord. And look what he said. When Moses heard it, did he get angry? Man, he fell upon his face. Know what? He probably feared for their life. He already seen what God was doing. These guys just have no honor, no regard. How, how you just talk to someone like that? Man, there should be a reference. I wouldn't walk up to no person and just say, listen, why do you think you're so more holier than us? Can't you see us in the congregation? Who you think you are? What, you just started this whole church and well, you think you could do this all without us? Where were you when I started? He didn't say all that. He said he didn't mention, well, I was in the back of the desert and the Lord came in a flaming bush. He didn't do that. He fell on his face. <clears throat> he was like, man, why are you doing that? That's why it says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Didn't say a dead God because they can't do nothing. It says a living God to fall into the hands. It's not when you fall and he lifts you up. It means falling into his hands where you're doing something wrong. Look at what he says. <clears throat> and he spoke unto Korah and to all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom has chosen, will he cause him to come near unto him? See, this is God doing it. Now, God loves us. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying. I want you to see the opposite here in the scriptures of what faith is in, or what hinders faith. Amen. From obtaining. Praise God. So it's honoring. Amen. This is another one. Worry. The other one was doubt and unbelief. But look, look at what it says, verse 6. This do take you censors, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord does choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. This is Moses. He said, you take too much upon you. And look at what he said. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, you sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated. See, they didn't consider their position anything much. They, did, they weren't even content. Isn't that what the devil did up in heaven? He wanted to be like God. What position? He was the highest cherubim among all. But was that good? No. He wanted to be more. You ever hear that? No. Guys, uh, no other one. I was thinking of something because uh, it was this video. But, man, the guy. Said no, but you had to be someone to try to get in the way, and so here he is. He said, <laughs> he said, it seems a small thing unto you that the God of Israel had separated you. Sometimes that's why you can't forget where you came from. That keeps you humble. You never what happened to David happened to Saul. David said to David when he messed up, God said, I would have did such and such for you. And then he said to Saul of before David, 
you did you were someone small in your own sight when I took you out and made you to be who you were that keeps you humble like when see they got too like all oh, familiar in their place but where you know where you're from it's like man know what David who said in Psalms I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to live what with the tents of the wicked, 10,000. Let me get the closing here. Hold on. He said, the God of Israel has separated you, that's set apart, sanctified, from the congregation of Israel. They were famous. There was like a million people. I mean, that's like someone in the world standard. They're on stage and singing. There's people listening to you. You got millions of people to bring you near to himself to do the service it's an honor to do service for the Lord of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister that's serving them to minister to them amen that's a good thing I like Harold back at the church he when I always say he's an usher and he said I'm not changing that's what the Lord called me to do and every time they go through before the door he says I appreciate you he always says it to every person I appreciate you he's a he's a good man I like him and they talk about him there that's why I could say it over at the church and so what does he say here and he has brought thee near to him and all the brothers of the son Levi with thee seek ye the good also see he was saying whoops saying you want another position because you're not good you're not content where you're at you want that also you remember who did that in the Old Testament the king he wanted to go and set incense up into the tabernacle and then leprosy hit his head they all rushed him out the priest because he was like, he's a king. He's like, nah, I'm doing this. I'm going to put the incest up in there. And then leprosy hit him because that was in his place. And so look at what happened. For which cause both thou and thy company are gathered against, together against what? The Lord. He didn't say against me. And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? See, Moses didn't say against me. When Paul, who was Saul, came against the Christians, guess what Jesus did? He showed up and he said, why kick you against the pricks? And why persecutest thou me? Why are you persecuting the Lord? And look at what it says. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abram, the son of Eliab, which said, we'll, we will not come up. They said, we ain't coming up. He said, it is a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in this wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Wow, that's some harsh words, man. See what happens, circumstances, doubt, not receptive come in. And know who brought them in? God. But know who brought them in? Faith by Moses because Moses faith is really what carried them in. and they walked they were afraid even going through but because Moses believed he lifted up the rod it caused millions to cross over amen and so we'll finish it here and watch this <clears throat> It says in verse 19, it says that Korah gathered the, all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them, un, unto all the congregation. The Lord spoke unto Moses and said unto Aaron, Separate yourselves among this congregation that I may consume them in one moment. And they fell on their faces and said, O God, O God, the spirits of all flesh shall one man sin. 
and will thou be wroth with all the congregation? He said, with one man, will you be mad at everybody? And look, and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, okay, speak unto the congregation saying, get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. And Moses rose up and went to Dathan and Abram and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest they be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram on every side. And Dathan and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents with their wives, their sons, and their little ones. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die in the common death of all men, or if they be visited after a visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. And if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up, that with all that appertain unto them, they go down quick into the pit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he, he had made an end of speaking all these words that he was just finishing and the ground claved asunder that was under them. And what? The earth opened their mouth, swallowed them up in their house and all the men that appertain on the Korah and all their goods. See that there? That's what faith, unbelief, or dishonored, open where they didn't obtain. They couldn't get in. Amen? <clears throat> so faith is, we want faith when we hear to be receptive to it so we can obtain. That's what God wants us to do. Amen? I'm, we're just teaching these things so you see the other coin side to it because we teach faith, but we want to know what faith is not. Amen? So we can have faith to believe amen we're seeing both sides but we're showing that coin not to get you discouraged but amen so you could see hey i don't want to be in this area so i want to obtain amen i don't want to let things slide or let things slip amen i want to i want to hold fast and go forward in the things of god praise god hallelujah let, let's pray amen Father, we thank you this evening. We honor you and praise you, Lord. And if we allow things to slip out of our life, Father, tonight, Lord, we want to get back on walking with you, Lord. And the best way to do that is you, you just turn, you confess, and you come back. You acknowledge, you, that's where you see where you're at. You turn from it. You want to change of mind. That's repent. You return. And then what happens? You could go forward. So how you do that? You just tell Lord you're sorry. And today I want to start anew again. You just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. I messed up. I missed it. I want to fix it today, Lord. And I want to get back on track today. I ask you to forgive me. And I thank you today for your forgiveness, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you. You said if we confess our sins, you're just and faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you today for forgiving me. Thank you, Father, for your blood that cleanses me from all unrighteousness. And I thank you for putting me right back on the path of where you're taking me, Lord. I refuse doubt. I refuse unbelief. And I receive your word, which is faith in my heart. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, right now, today. I make, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me, that I could be made free. I thank you 
I receive you as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, write us. Let us know. We want to hear from you. We want to be able to be sure to get you some material to you to help you grow further and farther in the things of God. Amen. So you can be a man or a woman of God, not just a child, but grow so you can know the things God has for you. Amen. Have a blessed evening. God bless you. Praise God.